Hello and welcome to another video. All right, today's video is about unbricking your APM. So in case you tried somebody's custom firmware and it bricked your APM, or for some reason you were writing to it in Mission Planner and you had a verification error, and uh, after that you can't do nothing. Another hint is, is when you plug in your APM and all it's doing is a constant beeping sound. That sometimes means the uh, one of the ESCs is wrong or bad but it can also mean that the APM is bricked. So I'm gonna show you guys how to unbrick it. Here's the ISP I ordered. I actually just made my own. I ordered this one basically just so I can show you guys uh, in a higher detail using Windows. And uh, I'll show you guys how to install the drivers and stuff for this. At the end of the video, I'll also show you how to just make your own. You can make it for like, I don't know, it depends what you have kicking around the house. I had enough material around my house to make it. You just need a parallel cable and about three resistors. And uh, that's it. That's how easy it is to make it. Anyways, so this is the guy I got it from. Um, here's a little bit of details about it. And that's it. So I'll jump right into the video right now. Okay, so here's an example. When you plug in your uh, APM. And you try connecting to it. So basically all that's going to happen is this. It's going to go on forever. It might time out on you. So some, th some things you can try doing before you uh, try the programmer. Is just go to initial setup. And just pick the default firmware up here. And if it's not up there, just go to pick previous firmware. So just try this guy first. See what happens. So this is the biggest hint here that it's bricked. It usually only takes less than a second for it to detect the right APM board. So it's going to be stuck here. And then from this, it's probably going to start reading it, which I don't think it really is anyways. And there you go. So that usually is a for sure sign your APM is bricked. So I'm going to include a package. You can download the uh, drivers and stuff right from uh, Atmel's website. And uh, same with uh, AVR Dude. You can find all that stuff on your own, but I'll include it on my Google Drive as a package. I think it's about 20 megs maybe. Anyways, uh, so I'll jump to that folder. So extract the files somewhere and open up Control Panel. You might be able to skip some of these steps in case it actually gets in detected, depending if you're into programming or not. So plug in the ISP. Here you'll notice that there's no driver for it. And that usually means you're going to have to follow the next two steps. If it uh, you have a jungle folder up here or whatever, that means everything's fine. But we'll just take it as if you have the same setup as mine. And I'm running Windows 10 as well, so this should work for Windows 7, 8, and 10. Okay, so the first thing you want to install is the drivers bundle. You can actually unplug the uh, USB as well for now. All right, so now you can plug in your USB again, the ISP. It should get detected this time. So here I have a folder up here now, or a device I mean. I got two of them listed. So we're pretty much done in here now, so you can close this down. Next, go into this folder. If you're running the 64-bit, uh, go here. If you're running 32-bit, go in this folder. But I'm running a 64-bit. Now choose Install Filter. Install a Device Filter, yes. Next. Now find your device here. Mine is the AVR ISP. Install it. It's all good to go. You're done with this now. It's just trying to install another one if you have another one. So just push this guy here. Back up. For debugging reasons, if you want to, before you actually hook it up to your uh, APM, you can run the erase unlock.bat just to see if your unit actually gets detected. 
So basically right here it said it found it, so it is detected. All right, so that's good. So I'll close this window down. Unplug your USB. I'm going to show you a video now how to connect it to your APM. All right, I have the two APMs out right now, the two different kinds I have. The APM 2.8, 2.6, and then I got the original one here. So I'll show you how to wire up this guy first. So orient your board this way. I also took out these cables here right off the APM. The kit or the ISP does come with uh, this guy here, but it's kind of useless. It doesn't fit in anyways. And you can you can make it fit if you take off this board and everything. Also, if you did the optical flow mod, you have to revert back to, I believe, the 5 volts. So you have to put that trace back again. So this guy here, just have both white wires facing up. And this one's basically pin for pin. So you take the first cable here. and face white up and then same for this one so you can plug it in you can plug it in this way don't use your USB cable only if you're using the uh, parallel port one, then you need USB power. But this guy should power up the APM. So here, you can see it's turned on. So now you can actually program it. All right. So I'll show you the next one. All right, the next APM is the uh, one out of the CX-20. It's the version 252, version 5. Orient the board this way, and same with this guy here. And it's basically the same way. Put the white at the top. And then the white at the top on this one. Same on this side. All right. And then you can plug it in to see if it works. All right, so it's all good to go. For the next step, uh, I'll show a couple of pictures just with the pinouts. Leave uh, these wires connected to either this APM or whichever APM you have for the next step. All right, get into that. All right, we're back from Connecting the wires, you can plug in the ISP again. You should get some lights happening on it. All right, this time click on this one first, the erase unlock dot bat. So it found it again, so all is good. All right, so push any key to continue. Next one you want to click on is the right one. So this is going to write the uh, bootloader. It's not actually writing the firmware for the APM. Um, with the LPT port one, sometimes you could write, but it won't read properly. So even if you do get an error on it, usually it's good. So as soon as you're done, just jump into um, Mission Planner and try writing just to see if it actually worked or not. So this one didn't actually give any errors at all, so that usually means it's good. So now, push any key to continue. You can unplug your ISP and unplug the cables from your APM. And now plug the USB cable into your APM and open up Mission Planner. See if it gets detected. Com4, 
actually still underneath connect just to show you guys this it'll still have this problem because all we did was actually load the boot loader so don't worry about that just click on whichever firmware you want to use so this one I'll just click on this guy and there you go All right, so everything seems right. So now you can push connect. And you just saved yourself your APM. Um, it's handy now because now if you're into programming, you can program with confidence. So it doesn't matter if you brick it. You, you, know, you now know you can save it. All right, so that's it, guys. Uh, if this was helpful, hit up a like. Uh, I'm going to jump on to showing you guys how to wire up the LPT, the parallel port. So if you're not interested in that, you can stop the video now. And if you're interested in making your own for basically free, I'll show you how to make that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, I'll just show you guys the actual cable, and I'll show a picture of the uh, pinouts. I want to actually build it. If there's any interest in, in building your own uh, parallel port programmer, because I believe not too many people actually even have a parallel port anyways. So basically, you can just grab one of these cables, cut it in half, and uh, just keep this side and do um, direct solders on the pins. So basically, you just need a couple of resistors. The one I had made is this guy here, and... Uh, Basically, all you need is the uh, the first and the second pin, and then one there. I just use surface mount resistors. I had 1K resistors only, so I stacked them to make it 500, I believe. Oh, actually, that one's 250. And, um, yeah, so that's what that would look like. But basically, you don't need this board. This board came off, I believe, a JTAG, so I just hacked in. These resistors here to, for my purpose and the headers here you would just glue here and it, again it's just pin for pin but you don't need to do this you can just connect just use the wires themselves and do direct solders with pins onto whatever you're doing so I just want to show you guys that I'll show you the picture of the schematic if there's uh, interest like I said I can uh, do a step-by-step -step on exactly how to make it but it's really easy to make all right